operate a computer, so you know you should be Very afraid. Important. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to kind of talk to you about some, some gender issue things um, I have a presentation today. Um, okay, so what I'm basically going to be talking about is the rampant sexism that has hit our community, the skeptic community, the atheist community, and, uh, and I guess he, he already kind of figured out who knew what. So for a lot of you, this sounds like it's going to be kind of a new introduction to the to the topic. Is that the feel that I'm getting? Okay, so this will be an interesting interesting thing. Can everybody see? Do I need to move over here? Okay. And um, I want to establish kind of why this topic is important and also where it started, uh, its current incarnation, and you know, why are we still talking about this anyway? You know, this happened two weeks ago. There, you know, it started actually this current incarnation two years ago, and uh, you know why is it that we're still here? Why are we still talking about this? Why am I here today? Kind of thing. So one of the things I thought that we should do before we get started is to define some of the words that we're going to be talking about tonight, so that we don't have an entire hour of well, what does that mean? That's not how I mean it. Well, what I, I mean it this way, I mean it that way. Okay, so in typical debate style, we're going to define our words. So the first thing we need to discuss, and, and not discuss, but identify is the word sexism, and what does that mean? For the purposes of my conversation with you tonight, sexism is a prejudice, a stereotyping, discrimination, or devaluation based on a person's sex. Not just because you're a girl, not just because you're a guy, it goes either way, okay? So in, in this talk, that's how sexism is going to work. For example, um, you'll get farther with a woman if you compliment her on her eyes than having an intellectual conversation. I mean, very sexist comment there. Um, okay. When you objectify something or someone that degrades that person to the mere status of an object, and they, you, you basically take away their humanity and you turn them into an object, and they have as much significance to the world as a cup or a chair. And of course, you would think that that would be bad to objectify a person. Um, and in my example of this one is if you have a presenter who shows a bunch of scantily clad women on their slide to an audience that's fairly mixed, this could be considered objectifying these women to make the point that they don't really have any value to the conversation. They're just there for eye candy. They're there to, you know, as an object of the, of the conversation rather than something important. And feminism, which is kind of a loaded word, and sometimes I think it's almost as loaded as the word atheist. Um, it's basically, at its heart, the advocacy of women's rights on the ground of political, social, and economic equality to men. Um, and so I want to stress this word here, equality, because that's important in, in the discussion um, that I'm going to have. Um, and you know, I think one of the things that, that tends to get compromised when we start talking about feminism is a lot of feminists get upset when the guy doesn't open the door for them, but they still want to get paid the same. Well, open your own door, and then you're equal, right? So that's that's where I sit on the feminism, and that's how we're defining that word for the purpose of the talk. Okay, so a couple years ago, once upon a conference, we go, there's a presentation. And the guy is up there, he's talking, he uses some imagery and some you know, things in his speech that are questionable, um, that he objectifies uh, a woman in his, in his talk, he makes some very um, sexist comments, he does some different things like that. And of course the women in the audience go, whoa, whoa, wait, I don't like that, bad, don't do that. And there's this huge outcry, some men get involved, and pretty soon, you have this massive blood hunt for this speaker. And they want him to, to resign his, his position in the community, and they want him to say he's sorry for doing all of these horrible, horrible, horrible things to these women. Okay? Does this sound familiar to anybody? Anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? Okay. Well, it happened at a Ruby conference <laughs> two years ago. Ruby is a programming language <coughs> used to write programs. It has absolutely nothing to do with skepticism. The point is, this happens all over the place. It's in lots of different places. It's not just in the skeptical community. Move two months, you have exactly the same scenario. Somebody's up on stage, 
He has a presentation that is objectifying a female in his thing. He makes the comment that I used in there about talk to a woman and get a date if you tell her she has pretty eyes, but don't expect anything if you talk to her on an intellectual level. And wham, we have the nuclear explosion of feminism and sexism in our community too. Okay, so it's exactly the same song and dance. Been there, done that. So why are we still here, right? This was two years ago. Enter Elevator Gate. So for those of you who know what this is, okay, take a deep breath. Bear with me. We'll get through it. Okay. For those of you who don't know, um, do you, any of you know who Rebecca Watson is? Okay. That don't know about Elevator Gate. Okay. okay. Rebecca Watson is, an ex is a very, very prominent, maybe, maybe one of the top prominent out there female skeptics in the community. And she does a very large number of conferences every year. Um, she's very popular, she's a great speaker. She was in Dublin you know, God, a couple weeks ago, and she gave a presentation on basically sexism and skepticism and you know, why it's a problem, blah, blah, blah. So she gives this, con this speech. That evening, she's at the bar till four in the morning. She's having drinks with everybody, she's talking, she's socializing, she's doing her thing. And she, it's four o'clock in the morning, and she's like, okay guys, I'm tired, I'm gonna get up to bed, we still have a whole day of conference left, I will see you in the morning. And some, some guy breaks away from the group, someone she has not spoken to, this person has not contributed to the conversation at all, gets up, follows her to the elevator, they get on the elevator and they ride up to whatever floor it was. And while they're in the elevator, riding to the floor so she can go to bed, he says, he turns to her and says, you know, I, I'm a big fan of yours, I, you know, I think you're great, blah, blah, blah. Don't take this the wrong way, but I would like to, you know, would like to know if you'd like to go have coffee with me in my room. And Rebecca Watson says, oh, you know, that's really nice, but no, thank you, you know, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. It could have ended there. Right? We could have been done, no, no harm done. But it didn't. She went on to her blog, posted a video, recapping her conference experience in Dublin. And in there, as an offhand comment, she mentioned this guy, we will now refer to him as Elevator Guy, and said, dude, that was really creepy, you know, there's a lot of people that would consider that creepy, just don't do that. Okay? End of story. Could have been the end of the story. Wasn't. Okay? So another prominent figure in the community got online and said, guys, don't be jerks. Don't creep women out. This isn't good. You know, we, we, we don't want to make women feel ostracized, objectified, sexist. And we don't want to do that. Okay, so don't. And Richard Dawkins comes back, and he sends a message out called Muslima. And he's basically mocking, not mocking, I don't want to use that word. He, he's writing a satirical letter uh, to a fictional woman saying, I'm sorry. Muslim woman that you have to face genital mutilation and you have to wear a burqa in 108 degree weather and I'm sorry that you are genderfied, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry, you don't have it as bad. Rebecca Watson had to deal with the guy asking her out on a date. Okay? Um. All right, so of course, boom! Nuclear explosion number three. The community went crazy. Everybody's calling for blood on Richard Dawkins' head, and they wanted to go, dude, you don't get it. What are you doing? This is awful. This guy creeped her out. It was a threatening situation. It was just, you know, she was almost attacked. What? Wait, no, 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 no. That is not what happened. But through the course of all of the blogging and the discussions and the comments, that's kind of where it went. The fact of the matter is, the guy asked her if he wanted to go to his room and have coffee because he liked her as a presenter, as a person, wanted to get to know her better. She said, no, thank you, and that was it. Okay? That was, those are the facts as they are laid out, confirmed by Rebecca Watson. If you listen to SGU, she, that's what she says now. But it wasn't enough to just let it go at that. The community had to have this big discussion, which is why, ironically, I had this talk planned two months ago, so, <laughs> so I had to add this in because it's such a, such a hot thing. So that's kind of where we're at right now, is what do we do now? Why is the elevator gate, elevator gate, why couldn't it just be you know, do you want to go to my room? No, thank you. And we're done. What happened? Okay. So, considering how insane <laughs> this whole thing is, I decided I'd take a step back and, and start looking at some things that, from, from my experience in the Ruby community and my experience in the skeptic community, and see, you know, what do we have in common and 
what are some things that I've heard? What are some things that I've heard discussed? What are some solutions? What you know? What are the different topics of conversation that I've, that I've experienced out there? And the big thing is that, that both of these communities, most of these communities, when you hear this kind of thing happening, are predominantly male. They're they're very high level, high percentage of men. To give you kind of an example, in the Ruby community where um, we do these, my husband and I are programmers, and we do these conferences, three, four, five of them a year. If there's 250 programmers at the conference, I will be one of 10 women, okay? That's 5% of the total population, okay? To give you some perspective on that number, at the TAM meeting two years ago when the original conference blow up happened, the first one, there were 30% women in the audience. So we're talking more than a quarter of the audience were women, okay? So yes, it's still predominantly male, but we're not talking quite to the extreme that it is, say, in the programming community. And then that, here's your TAM attendance. So as, as it's grown from 125 people in the very first one all the way to up to over 1,300 last year, two years ago, two years ago there's, I mean, the, the attendance has grown, the number of women has grown. So it's, it's we're seeing women in the community even though it is still predominantly male. That doesn't mean women aren't out there. It's just now we've got enough of a voice. I mean, if there's, you know, 1,000 people, 30% is 300. That's not a small number, <laughs> right? So that is one of the reasons why I feel like we're starting to really hear this more because the number of women that are in the community has risen as, as the community has gotten bigger. So one of the other things that I've kind of looked at and heard is, you know, how do we get women into science? Because science appeals to men, it doesn't appeal to women. Except look at this graph. <laughs> I mean, these three fields right here, I mean, psychology, 75% of degrees awarded in colleges, bachelor's degrees, are awarded in psychology to women. Well, that's not, that's not a small number, that's a lot of people. Um, over 50% in both social sciences and biology. Biology is a precursor to med school and healthcare services. Okay. But when you get into physics, computer science, engineering, much, 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 much lower predominant of women, right? Well, okay, so when I look at this graph, I think social, not so social, <laughs> right? Women like social things as, as, a, as a, an inclusive stereotype gender. Women tend to pick professions that have more interaction, more of a back and forth with another human being. Um, profession, psychology is one of them. Social sciences, healthcare profession. I mean, women rock the healthcare profession. There were 11,000 women in healthcare versus three in the whole healthcare field two years ago. That's a big number. <laughs> okay, so to say women aren't attracted to science is hooey. They're just not attracted to the heavier sciences, like, and heavy, I mean, paper and pencil kind of more math-based science. Sorry, no, no. You're, 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 you're in this, this person down here. <laughs> math so, rocks, okay. Math does rock, you're right. <laughs> Go math. <laughs> but, so, the perception that women aren't in science, or that women don't do science, in my opinion, is very skewed. It just doesn't tend to draw in the fields that skeptics are coming from. Anybody kind of follow that? Okay, so anyway, I just kind of wanted to set that up because um, every time I've gotten into a conversation with anybody about this particular topic, it's, it's a big deal. Everybody's got something they want to say, everybody has their own opinion, and if you are in any way interested, I would like to open it up to a debate, uh, a, a, a like four or five panel debate, where a couple of us get up here, I will present some ideas that I've seen or that I've heard, and then we can, you know, in our panel we can talk about it and discuss it as, as a, like a kind of a micro group as a whole, if that would appeal to anybody. I totally want to watch right. this. 